Hello and welcome to Fanversation. I am Yel Teagle, the big host for the big fans, and I am sitting down with someone very special. If you are watching Star Trek Picard, you will know him as Captain Shaw. We have Todd Stashwick. Hello. Yeah. How Hello. are you? I'm so excited to be talking about this season. I hear from uh, lots and lots of diehard Star Trek people that this is the best season of Star Trek in a long time. It's, uh, uh, you know, I, I will leave that up to others to say. I am proud and thrilled to be part of uh, not only this legacy, but uh, this season in particular is, is pretty special, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about uh, your your Star Trek fandomness. Yeah. Um, how have you been watching Star Trek from the beginning? So since 1974, uh, okay. I was a I was a I was a six year old boy, and my cousin Tori gave me my first action figures, which were Kirk, Spock, and McCoy, because I had already been enjoying the reruns of the original series, and so that sort of literally is my first foray into sci-fi fantasy action adventure that was kind of where it all began that lit the fuse for me and so watch the original series then uh then now then you hit like the late 70s and the 80s and i'm watching the movies because i was a fan since i was a little boy so now i'm watching them as a teen uh watching the wrath of khan undiscovered country uh and then when I was in college and then a, a young actorling in Chicago, I started, I, you know, next generation was appointment television for myself and my, and my, uh, roommate, best friend. Uh, we, I would come home from uh, a day slogging at second city, uh, and watch, watch next generation. So Star Trek has been with me kind of as long as I can remember things. Yeah. Um, I love that those are your first action figures because behind you, and I know also from your Instagram, you're like a, a collector. Oh, I don't mess around, Yale. Yeah. I am hardcore toys. Because again, this is these are the things that lit the fuse of play acting, pretend, imagination. These things uh stuck with me since since then. And those are the things that motivated me to, you know, I started pretending to be a Starfleet captain at six years old. So uh, I'm still doing it. Yet yeah, now you, you get to be one. I get to be one. Yeah. Had a lot of practice. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, yeah. So we meet in this, in the, in the season premiere, we meet Captain Liam Shaw. He's captain of the USS Titan. Um, that's yep. you. Um, I got to ask this because I found this quite amusing. He's kind of a dick. And you, we've talked about this before that like you are no, no stranger to playing bullies and, and assholes and like really Jeez. mean people. Um, Captain but, James T. Jerk. Come on. <laughs> um, but you got to be I, an uh, asshole to, to Patrick Stewart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I have, as we say in the business, resting villain face. Mm. Uh, I also gravitate towards characters that um you just don't like on the onset and i love the idea of trying to make those characters sympathetic and trying to find the humor in them and then hopefully surprising and changing your mind and 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 then you step back and go oh i understand why he does what he does and why he is who he is and I kind of sympathize for him, and I kind of think he's right in many ways. Um, and hopefully always uh, always just a fun person to have around. <laughs> um, was it really fun to be rude to Sir Patrick Stewart? <laughs> you know, I'll be honest, it was, uh, it was a bit of a relief because the character comes at them so hard and so passive aggressively and at times downright aggressively that uh, it, it almost made it easier than, than uh, because my character was immediately taking high status over them. And that made those scenes delicious to play. 
and uh, and it it already let all the steam out of the oh my god he's a knight of the realm um, <laughs> yeah to the to the situation yeah um, speaking of delicious uh, what were you eating this alien meat yeah what were you, what what was Todd eating alien meat i see i see they saved it from the roswell crash and <laughs> uh and it's doled out judiciously no i believe it was impossible i'm a vegetarian so i believe it was impossible burger uh oh. died blue oh. yeah All right. so alien meat yeah absolutely yeah. who knows what's an impossible <laughs> yeah i'm saying fell to earth <laughs> um yeah i was like that looks interesting so i thought I it is it was delicious. It stayed my mouth blue, but it was delicious. <laughs> um, how many bites did you have to eat? A one, a two, a three. I don't remember. Uh, it was, uh, it was, it was, I think it was just at the top to get those close ups because I don't think I kept eating through the scene. That, that right. it was more about the sipping of the wine and such. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, yeah, you shot this a while ago. You've been holding on to the secret for a long time. Yeah, I shot that scene specifically September of 2021. Oh my goodness. And I wrapped shooting on the whole project this time last year. Wow. Yeah, so I've had to sit on these state secrets for a while. Um, well, I I'm excited that we're now revealing all the secrets. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is so strange. It's like this weird multi-stage rocket that like I did this thing that was the I, and my first day of work was Star Trek Day uh, of 2021. I'm driving <laughs> to work uh, and and there are a lot of them were being interviewed at the Skirball while I'm driving to go sit in my captain's chair on my bridge. Um, and so that was kind of nice poetry. Um, and then. And then there's the reveal when, when I was in the trailer uh, during the AFC Championship. So then suddenly the world knew that I was in it. Then we had the big premiere at the Chinese a week ago. And so all of this stuff has happened and the show isn't even out into the public uh, as, as this interview is happening. But uh, it will be by the time I think people see this. It'll be finally out in the wild. So I'm excited. I, I don't know how you do it. Um, I... <laughs> I, I have I have a secret and I'm bursting at the seams and I don't know how you kept it together for so long. Well, uh, there's lots of legal documents that sure. you sign and there's sniper rifles pointed at you from high atop the uh, Paramount <laughs> Tower. Hmm. Yeah. Dangerous tower. Um, yeah, dangerous. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, this is, you know, you're collaborating again with Terry Metalis, who yeah. um, is responsible for 12 Monkeys. One of the greatest shows ever to have existed. Thank um, you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, how was it reuniting with him? Um, what did he say? Well, Terry and I have been in contact, you know, mm. uh, trying to figure out, uh, creating ideas together, you know, pitching ideas, wanting to do something uh, together because we had such a great, not only a uh, professional collaboration but we have a we we are cut from the same cloth we're both 80s nerds and so um the same things motivate us in storytelling and, and we we seek the same forms of entertainment in many ways and so uh getting back together with him on this and he pitched it to me he says we have an idea for a character for you in Star Trek Picard and my first response was I can't wait to see who gets to play it because as these things go off and go in the industry you never actually get to be the one that they wrote it for uh but and I've been the guy out there that has been the guy that got hired when it was written for somebody else so you always you always are like you appreciate the thought but then you sort of sit tight and wait and he uh was a man of his word and like a month later there I was being fit for my uh, for my Starfleet uniform. Oh my goodness! Tell me you took that home with you. I no. no. In fact, in fact, uh, what was awesome was we had the premiere at the Chinese Theater, and I walk into the lobby of the Chinese Theater off the the blue carpet. I walk in, and there's my uniform in a glass case on a mannequin. 
I'm like, oh, oh that's that's cool. That's cool. I would have loved to have kept it, but now these things are now belong in a museum, apparently. That's amazing. Yeah, it was cool. It was uh, cool. Wow. That's so cool. I I like can't imagine walking in and being like, oh, that's I wore that and now it's in a glass case. It was crazy. It was crazy. And then there were people after the screening, people were uh who had just seen it were like, hey, would you go pose in front of your uniform? I'm like, sure. That's cool. <laughs> wow. Um, I mean, the Star Trek like Trekkies are like a big fandom. Hardcore, big hearted, yeah. massive people. Yeah. And you're now part of that world. Um, like like part of you were always part of the Trekkie world, but now you're like the person well, that they're <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was part of uh I was on Enterprise years ago, right? Uh, and as a as a Romulan disguised as a Vulcan, and I had thought, you know, well, there you go. There's my contribution to this canon that I love. Uh, in no way did I ever imagine that the carousel would circle back around, um, and I would be sitting there in my uh, captain's chair, uh, giving orders, hurtling through space. So cool. So yeah, that's cool. cool. It's cool. <laughs> um, so I want to compare this character for a second to a beloved character, Deacon. Um, yeah. because I feel like they are very similar. Um, in that th they... they're both leaders. Mm -hmm. They're both like they both sort of command uh, you know, a fleet or an army of people. They're both kind of jerks when you first meet them. They are prickly. Um, I'll tell you this, though. When you first meet Deacon, he's kind of charming. Uh, upon the onset, when we first meet him and he meets Cole, he's actually quite magnanimous. And In fact, that was part of my audition as I was like, I did not want to make this guy uh, jerky because mm. if he has to be the head of 200 people there's a reason and not just because he's tough it's because he's charismatic and if he's going to get cole and and ramsey on his side he has to be kind of charming and i wanted to have have that a bit of a cult leader mm -hmm. vibe to him and so i kind of leaned into his humor and leaned into his uh laid back flair and i think i do think um there's with with Shaw. Shaw has this sort of blue collar grace to him, mm. uh, where he doesn't suffer fools. He says whatever he's on thinking on his mind. He is not. He, there, there's a police chase going on outside of my <laughs> uh, nerd lair. Um, <laughs> he's he he is caustic. He is blunt. He uh, suffers no fools. So they're both very similar in that respect. I would say where Deacon is far more reckless mm. and far more um, he breaks the rules, even though he makes the rules. Right. Uh, Shaw, uh, without without giving too much away, but sort of things that have happened in his past. Um, really uh, make him believe very strongly in procedure and protocol for survival. His one job as they are out there in the, in the final frontier is to keep his crew alive. That is his primary job. Keep the ship running, keep the explorations uh, on, on uh, target and keep everybody alive. And so I think he is far more risk averse than Deacon is. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, I love, I love that. I love a person who is a rule follower, and that's what makes them kind of a dick. Is like, well, we got to follow these rules now, and you're like, calm down, and, calm down. And they're also in there again. The procedures and the protocols and the chain of command and all that in Starfleet are there to keep people alive. Right. So, and he again, for reasons, has a very, very strong need to keep people alive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's buried in his, uh, in his, you know, I'll say uh, deep trauma. Uh, he's, he is hell bent on 
sticking to protocol to keep people alive. And he also does the right thing. And he will he will bend the rules hmm. if he if he has all the information. He needs he needs to know what's going on, and so much is kept from him uh, uh, when we first meet him. And so he's like, "Screw that! I'm not doing that! I'm not doing that! I'm not doing that! I'm not doing that!" So, uh, so you're on my ship. I make the rules on my ship. I am the bottom line. Yeah, I love that. I like that so much is kept from him, and currently, so much is kept from us. <laughs> Well, there's the fun in storytelling. It's like, I don't want to tell you what's in the present before you open it. I know. I'm so impatient. I cannot wait to see more. Um, uh, so I have to ask, I know that one of the things you love to do is make nerd-inspired uh, geek wear for the nerd circus, inspired by things that you're on. Um, can we expect some cool Star Trek inspired nerdware on the nerd circus? I, I, I'm not going to rule out, uh, uh, stuff that is kind of winky and maybe parody ish mm -hmm. of, he said to cover legal terms. Sure, um, of course. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's what I meant. Parody living stuff. within the realm of, uh, yeah, I mean, of course I, I, I certainly would love to create stuff to celebrate, um, this fandom because you know I've done stuff for 12 monkeys and the originals inspired uh mm -hmm. stuff on the site that it would just stand to reason that now that uh I've I have my uh hands uh in this world that I would love to do a little uh a little tip of the tip of the fedora I'm excited um mm -hmm. I I'm sure I've told you many a times but my Thai monkeys shirt is literally my favorite t-shirt. It's this Almost friend, wore today. It's the softest material. It's, it's good so stuff. comfortable. It's good stuff. Um, so yes, I really hope that there is a nodding at I, I wouldn't rule it out. Right. I wouldn't rule it out. Um, and people can check everything that is currently available at thenerdcircus.com. Mm -hmm. There will be a link below this interview. Um yeah. So um, any final thoughts, Todd, to tease up what we can expect for the season? Because it's the third and final season. Third and of final Picard. season. Um, anything to tease. I would say uh, Star Trek fans, keep your ears open because there are some love. There's even deep cut uh, audio cameos so i would listen for those that's kind of fun okay. um it is it is a like like 12 monkeys uh though it is a finely crafted tapestry woven with lovely uh and necessary nods to the past they're they're building a future they're building a a current story based on the history of the franchise, not just, not just Star Trek: Next Generation. There is Voyager, Deep Space Nine, nods to the original series. It's all, it's all in here. I like the, the vibe. It has a Wrath of Khan, uh, undiscovered country vibe to it, giving it that big movie treatment. It's a ten-hour movie, and I think it, it's filled with heart and action, adventure, and mystery. All of the things why we uh, pop popcorn people sit down with people that love good big storytelling and uh and, and and have a blast i can't wait i i i've said many a times to many a people that that 12 monkeys is i would say the best time travel show uh next to doctor who uh to ever Thanks. exist and Thank you. i think that one of the reasons i feel that way is because terry metallis ties the loose ends together he goes this is a thread i'm going to include it oh my goodness that is terrifyingly amazing <laughs> i love it there's my deacon jacket and oh, wow. my west seven flag <laughs> amazing um but and the I, word of the witness yeah that's yeah. that's so scary that you've got weird fun. stuff um, i got weird stuff but but Terry ties everything together so beautifully. He does not yeah, let anything I mean, fall. There is no, there's no crumbs, right? So uh, we have a fantastic writer's room on uh, on 12 Monkeys, and they, you know, yarn boarded everything. <laughs> uh, 
and so it all made it it, it, it it's like a, like a dare i say a watch like the gears are so tightly together and you know in addition to uh to terry our writer's room on picard uh, had several 12 monkeys writers as well uh and then and then other writers that were not from 12 monkeys but that same care mm -hmm. uh and understanding that we have 10 episodes to tell a story so let's start let's like build the mystery and put it together so that it all lands perfectly and and hopefully satisfying mm -hmm. threads that were started in the next generation tv series so and and uh pulling it all together in that mm -hmm. way that terry and, and the writers do uh, yeah. So if you if you did like Twelve Monkeys, there is uh, there's even some winks at Twelve Monkeys in this uh, in this um, in this that. series. I I have full faith in this uh, writing team to to bring it all home. So good, they're so good. It's it's unbelievable. We got these scripts and it was just like I couldn't wait to read the next one. Uh, I have not seen all of the episodes yet. I've seen the first four and then I've seen chunks. Of the later ones, but if if uh, if the first four are any indication, it's just gorgeous and it's shot beautifully. Every penny is on the screen. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. Well, I cannot wait. Uh, as a reminder for everybody, Star Trek Picard season three, the third and final season, Thursdays on Paramount. You need an Plus. N in Paramount. Oh well, I'll redo it. Said, it. it said Paramount. <laughs> I knew it was wrong. There it is. <laughs> There we go. Paramount. Zoom! <laughs> we did it. Magic of technology, Yale. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you so much. Todd, if people want to keep up with you on social media and check out the Nerd Circus, where are you on the internet? I am at Todd Stashwick on the Twitter, T Stashwick on the Instagram, and you can go to the nerdcircus.com. And if you are to Dungeons and Dragons, I wrote a uh, uh I wrote a tiki drink cocktail book uh with sort of a dungeons and dragons uh feel uh i sell glasses and t-shirts and nerdy fun dice and all that yep all stuff. the cool stuff it was it was my lockdown project during the height of uh of the pandemic that's how i kept my idle hands busy i it was a very successful project thanks thank you thank you yeah i mean i had a great collaborator with brendan cleely former Imagineer, uh, and then the guy that wrote all of our uh, our cocktails, uh, uh, Roy, he uh, he is a bartender at uh, Trader Sam's at Disney. So it's all legit. David Nett did uh, a lot of the D&D components. I mean, it was just a labor of love. So I highly recommend people grabbing that. Very cool. Um, and of course, you can get the Thai Monkeys t-shirt, which is the softest t-shirt ever in existence. So good. I, and then there's a Deacon shirt there. And I think I got a little winky supernatural Dracula shirt there. And yeah. There's lots of good all stuff. Sorts of, all sorts of fun. Yep. Um, I am ever at Yell Teagle. That is why -E A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E-L. Uh, you can find me here on Fanversation talking about Law and Order SVU, the greatest show of all time. Um, and uh, of course. I athlete. did that a couple times. Yeah. You were on two episodes of SVU. I was. Um, you played the measuring man in season one, episode three, <laughs> and you were in, um, uh, uh, I was undercover. a prison guard in another time. Yeah. Yep. Um, amazing. I love that. You know that, uh, thank you everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye.